Hey everybody, I'm going to talk about Bertie's hand today. Uh, I'm just going to give a little bit of an overview on how I went about building this shape in uh, sub D's. It's a strange shape, and it's got some it's got some really weird contours to it. Uh, the best way I could think of to build it was with a spline cage. So I'll give you a bit of a rundown on how I did that. I won't go step by step. But I will throw this model out there, um, probably in the asset section of uh, Luxology's site, so you can grab it and take a look and uh, kind of dissect it. And let's see. This is my cage. First, I'm going to, uh, maybe we should just talk about spine cage modeling a little bit. I'm going to create a new model here really quickly just some basics and I am not the authority on spline cage modeling I uh, I'm just grabbing the curve tool here draw a little curve out I uh, used to I've used spline cage modeling uh, years ago in 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 light wave and um, my experience with it in moto has been primarily through the uh, Andy Brown tutorial on the C9, uh, Sauer C9 race car, uh, which is a fantastic tutorial. If you if you want to learn about spline modeling, I suggest you get that. He he goes into much better detail on this, but I'll just give you the uh, the quick overview here. So I drew, I drew out a curve here, uh, you know, kind of a funky shape. Uh, I'm gonna just kind of tweak the contour here a little bit. And I'm going to clone this curve, give it a couple clones. And um, there are a few things that Andy does a little bit differently than I do, at least in that video. I don't know how, it was kind of an old video, but uh, as opposed to laying out, I think he has you lay out curves and then uh, join these guys up like so I find that a little tedious I don't do it that way uh, I would just grab these verts here and hit P create a polygon and uh, now you've got another curve there so that's all you really need to do there I'm just gonna bridge across these and uh, I'll explain why you have to bridge across these but essentially the idea here is you're creating a you're creating a cage you're creating exactly uh, what it's called. I mean, it's a cage. You're going to be basically bordering in the surface that you want to build. So you have to, you do have to put some planning into building these cages. And uh, sometimes I stumble on that. Uh, I know with the hand, Birdie's hand, for instance, took a couple of attempts at the uh, at the cage, um, and then patching and realizing it didn't work, and then having to rework the cage before I got the cage that worked. So you might just have to spend a little bit of time trial and error before you get good at this. I imagine it's like anything, and you probably could get uh, to the point where it's pretty intuitive. It's not necessarily intuitive for me yet, but it's uh, it's definitely a powerful workflow. So um, I'm just grabbing this tool under the uh, under the it's located under the pen tool. You'll see it's a patch curves tool. Just turned it off. Turn it back on. Uh, turn it on, activate it, just click in the window. Uh, you're going to see these these little uh, handles light up. And basically what you want to do is, I think by default this is set to extend. You're going to set it to define patch. And I'm just going to click in sequence on these four handles. And you're going to see a patch appear. Um, you want to have freeze turned on. Uh, I'm not sure what save boundaries does. I'm going to leave it on. But I know you definitely want to have freeze on. I think if you don't, you won't see any faces. So turn freeze on. Make UVs if you want to. Flip if you need to. Um, this one does need to be flipped so I can see what I'm looking at here in the shaded view. Um, and then basically it's just a matter here of defining your perpendicular and parallel rows. And uh, I can never remember which is which by the way I'm oriented in the viewport. So sometimes I just have to fiddle with these. Uh, you can see here fewer is obviously not going to match my curve as closely so I want to go to the point where I'm comfortable. Uh, this is going to be sub-patched 
after the fact, so it doesn't need to be precise. I don't need to add too much geometry at this stage. Um, and then from here, I can continue clicking around to these other patches. Mm. And uh, I'm going to drop the tool. So let's say now I want to uh, drop the tool and I want to come in and I want to patch this section here. Um, maybe it needs more, let's say it needs more, uh, more poly rows on the, uh, on the vertical here. So if you activate this now, you're going to see every face of your geometry that you just created is now going to be activated with this patch tool. It's going to be subdivided, which you don't want. So uh, I'm going to undo that. And then the way I work around this, I know I think Andy hides these. Um, you can hide them, you can put them, you can cut them onto a new layer or whatever. I just double click the faces and hit J, which locks that geometry. So now I can't select it. And subsequently, when I activate the patch tool, it will not activate the patch tool on those faces. So now I can come in here, grab these guys. And let's say I want to put more on the parallel do that. Grab this guy. Patch him up. Now I'm just going to hit I to unlock all of those. I'm going to select them all, hide the cage that I had, and uh, then I'm just going to hit Tab to subpatch these, and now i got a nice smooth contour shape. That, that's that's uh, spline cage modeling in a nutshell. I mean, that's not, uh, I'm sure you go into a lot more detail. Like I said, if you want to know the ins and outs of it, I suggest you probably check out Andy Brown's tutorial or uh, maybe some other tutorial. I seem to learn a lot from the Andy Brown tutorial. I really like that one, and uh, it really got me far. So check it out. Um, now, back to Birdie's hand here. I'm just going to turn on some verts. Whoa so we can see what we're looking at. And um, so basically, um, the gist with the uh, with these sections is basically you got to have each section that you're uh, going to be patching is going to be defined on four sides. I think you can also patch three-sided patches but they don't really flow properly you want to try to stick with quads and the way these are defined and uh, you, you can see I've got seven edges selected but this is still a patch this is going to be one single patch with four sides if I activate the patch tool here you'll see I've got four handles here uh, and the reason that is defined that way is going to be the intersecting vertices. So if you'll notice the intersecting vertices to that patch, there are only four. In other words, it's got four corners. If you can see that from where you're looking. And I'll tell you what we're going to do here. I'm going to go to preferences and just turn this up my uh, point size so maybe it reads a little better. But uh, hopefully you can see that from where you are. In fact, this is a better example. I mean, you've got this strange shape here it's pretty irregular and it's made up of eight edges but you will notice it's only intersected at the corners by four vertices the other vertices that throughout that shape are only helping to to hold the contour like in here these aren't intersected by other edges so when we activate the patch tool you'll see there's four handles. So we're able to patch that really smoothly, really cleanly. I'm going to get rid of those just for a sec. And uh, let's see. So that's pretty much it for the, the rules of patching, I think. Um, you'll notice if I, just to prove my point there with the, uh, with the intersecting edges, if I were to come in here, create another poly intersecting these, and then activate the patch tool, you'll notice this now has one, two, three, four, five handles. And if I were to try to patch those, they will not patch. Uh, so border all your patches on four sides and you should be good to go. And the next part, we will talk about uh, what to do after you patch this piece.